Have you ever wondered how scientists can edit our genetic code? Well, it's all thanks to genome editing techniques like base editing. This revolutionary tool, derived from the CRISPR-Cas9 system, allows us to rewrite the very blueprint of life itself. Unlike traditional genome editing methods, base editing doesn't induce double-stranded breaks in the DNA, but instead harnesses the power of catalytically dead Cas9 fused to bacterial enzymes known as DNA deaminases. From the naturally occurring cytidine deaminases that induce C to T substitutions in bacteria, to the engineered adenine deaminases that induce A to G substitutions, base editing provides a precise way to introduce substitutions in DNA. This was a major leap forward in the field, considering that many human diseases are caused by single nucleotide polymorphisms. The ability to edit without creating double-stranded breaks also reduces many potential risks associated with other forms of editing. Now that we've set the stage, let's delve deeper into the fascinating world of base editing. So how does base editing work and why is it different from other genome editing techniques? Diving right into the process, base editing begins with the employment of a catalytically dead Cas9, or DCAS9 for short. Unlike its functional counterpart in the CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing system, this DCAS9 is incapable of cleaving DNA. Its role in base editing, however, is far from insignificant. Acting as a guide, it directs the machinery of base editing to the specific DNA sequence we're targeting. Now here's where the magic of base editing truly begins. Fused to this DCAS9 is a bacterial enzyme, a DNA deaminase. There are two types of these enzymes, cytidine deaminases and adenine deaminases. Cytidine deaminases, which are naturally occurring in bacteria, induce C to T substitutions in the DNA sequence. On the other hand, adenine deaminases, which are engineered from bacterial enzymes, induce A to G substitutions. To initiate the base editing process, we provide a single guide, RNA or sgRNA. This sgRNA directs the DCS9 enzyme fusion to the target sequence on the DNA. Once there, the enzyme gets to work, introducing the desired substitutions in the DNA. But why is this process so special? Well, base editing allows for single nucleotide substitutions. This was a major step forward in the field of genome editing. A majority of human diseases are caused by single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs. By enabling precise single nucleotide substitutions, base editing provides a potential avenue for correcting these SNPs. Moreover, because base editing doesn't involve creating double-stranded breaks in the DNA, it avoids many of the potential risks associated with other genome editing techniques, like CRISPR-Cas9. However, it's worth noting that the current base editing systems only cover four of the 12 possible transition mutations. This limitation led to the development of a more comprehensive system known as prime editing, but that's a story for another time. That's base editing in a nutshell, a powerful tool that enables us to make precise single nucleotide substitutions in DNA. Understanding the process is one thing, but why does base editing matter? And what are its limitations? Base editing is significant for various reasons, with one of the key ones being its role in studying and potentially treating diseases caused by single nucleotide polymorphisms. Many human diseases, including certain types of cancer, cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia, can be traced back to single nucleotide polymorphisms. By introducing specific changes at the DNA level, base editing provides a new way to understand and potentially treat these diseases. What sets base editing apart is its precision. Unlike other genome editing tools, base editors can change individual DNA bases without causing double-strand breaks. This precise editing minimizes the risks of unintended mutations and opens up a new realm of possibilities for genetic research and medicine. However, as with any technology, base editing is not without its limitations. The current cytosine base editors, CBEs, and adenine base editors, ABEs, while revolutionary, do not cover the full spectrum of genetic mutations. They can only induce four out of the 12 possible transition mutations. This means that there are certain genetic changes that base editing 
in its current form, cannot make. Additionally, base editing is not 100% efficient. Not all cells that are targeted for base editing will undergo the desired change. There's also the challenge of delivering base editors to the right cells in a living organism. While significant strides have been made in this area, it remains a key hurdle for the field. Lastly, like all genome editing tools, base editors must be used responsibly. While they hold great promise for treating genetic diseases, they also raise ethical questions about the potential misuse of the technology. Despite its limitations, base editing continues to be a game-changer in the field of genome editing. Who knows what exciting discoveries await us in the future?